Welcome into the Michigan Football Report, and what is up to the MFers out there, the viewers, the loyal subscribers of the Michigan Football Report, and make sure you an MFer if you have been a loyal viewer since day one, day 200, whatever. If you subscribe, you're an MFer, so thank you so much for watching. going to talk a little wide receiver from the University of Michigan football team, a departing receiver, and some curious comments he made yesterday, in my opinion, and, of course, a potential transfer that seems to be all but done, which I don't think we'll officially hear about, maybe ever from Michigan, because they don't really re reveal anything. Uh, we'll just find out when this player suits up for another team, potentially. So we'll dive into that here over the next few minutes. And as you see across the bottom of the screen, I'm going to talk about the potential starting wide receiver. Starting wide receiver has been a starting wide receiver, and whether he's transferring, because maybe he's not going to be a trans uh, starting wide receiver in the future. Talk about that here later on in the show. But... Let's start with Nico Collins and his comments to the media yesterday surrounding Michigan's Pro Day, which is tomorrow, Friday, March 26. His comments on Ohio State and the Ohio State football program and the talent level compared to Michigan. And here's what he had to say, basically. That Ohio State had no talent advantage against Michigan in the time he was there, 2017, 18, 19, and 20. And that's just a frustrating comment for, I'm sure, any Michigan fan to uh, to hear or to, to take in. But I want to read for you what I think are the most uh, telling parts of these comments. There's three, really, that we're going to go over here. His comments on Ohio State, his comments on Jim Harbaugh, and his comments on why he didn't play for Michigan in the 2020 season after he opted out but had the opportunity to come potentially back in. So first up, the talent gap. No talent advantage. It's way closer. I'd say the talent level is the same kind of talent. I would say there's not a difference between the two. Every time we play O-State, we know what kind of game of it it's going to be. It's going to be all four quarters. Well, not recently, Nico, right? The game's been over by the second or third uh, minute of the third quarter in 2019 and 2018 when you were playing there. Uh, 2017, you know, there was a chance Michigan could have won it into the fourth quarter, but but I digress. So what game is he talking about? Because there hasn't been a four-quarter game in this rivalry in at least three years, or you can go back to the 2016 season and have a true game that came down to the wire in 2017, Ohio State. Michigan was up 14 early. Ohio State you know, tied it up and then eventually pulled away. Michigan had a chance, but it didn't really shake out there. Um, he ended his quote, a you know, lengthy quote to the media, which was, there was no tail advantage with them, none at all. I just wish Michigan would talk less, all right? I'm sure you do too. I have never seen more apathy around spring football in my life for, for the Michigan football fan base. Cause I think people are sick of the, it's basically the opposite of the boy who cried wolf, right? It, it's the boy who cried championships, right? That's what you typically get from the media. Typically what you get from the coaches, Don Brown, fastest defensive ever. Jim Harbaugh loves the quarterback room. Josh Gaddis, this talent here, talent there, speed and space. Everyone is, is just numb to it at this point. And in my opinion, and I hope I'm proven wrong because you know, I don't root for Michigan to lose by any means, but in my opinion, this is the worst returning roster, I don't know, since Rich Rod's first year in Michigan. This is a really bad team that's coming back from Michigan. So I want to ask you guys this question. Yes or no, comment below here on YouTube. Just type Y or N. I will pin this comment below. Do you agree with Nico Collins that there is no talent disparity between Michigan and Ohio State? If you agree with Nico, type Y. If you don't agree with Nico, type N. I'm going to put a capital N, bold it, and underline it if they let me down below because I definitely do not agree with them. So go down, comment. You might get hit with a YouTube ad break here. So if you do, scroll down, comment Y or N, scroll back up. We'll keep it rolling with this show. This is a message for all of you watching out there in YouTube land is if you're ever talking to the media, you're talking to uh, your friends, whoever it is, right? You can lie to them if you want, but don't lie to yourself. And if Nico Collins truly believes that he and his teammates were as talented as Ohio State, then I'm going to question his effort, right? Or I'm going to question the strategy in the coaching staff. But if he truly believes this, that all the comments he said, and we'll talk about the coaching staff here in a second, then he's lying to himself because he knows deep down that that is not the truth. And if he's just giving a, a coach speak or a player speak type of answer, that's fine. But an easier way to do that was I'm focused on the NFL draft. I appreciate everything that Michigan's done for me. And I really hope they beat Ohio State in the field this year, but I really want to talk about my future in the NFL draft. Boom, question's over. But the, left, the, the level of details he put in his comments, I kind of feel that 
he prepared that statement. He actually felt that that was true, which we all know if we watch the games, anyone who's watched football has turned on those games since the 20, halftime of the 2017 games, know that it has not been anywhere close to being true. Well, make sure you guys follow me on Twitter. If you're an MFer, I'm going to bring back the retweet and follow game for the rest of the month of March. So you got about a week or so. Uh, go ahead and follow me at James Yoder. Let me know you're an MFer and make sure you just tweet at me. No DMs because I just don't even you know, check them anymore. Tweet at me that you're an MFer, that you watch the show here on YouTube. I'll follow you back through the end of month of March and make sure I hit you with a retweet. It's at James Yoder on Twitter. If talent isn't the issue for this team, then yikes, okay? What does that mean? If talent is an issue, then coaching and strategy is the issue? Effort's the issue? Did Nico Collins give lackluster effort? I mean, Tariq Black went out of bounds against Ohio State uh, uh, when, when there was possibility Michigan could have still been in the game. And um, you know, there's a running back that didn't cut in the right hole a couple years ago, 2019 season. It was Hassan Haskins. So is that effort? Is that strategy? Is that development? If talent is an issue, then I'm going to give it a big yikes. And here's what the media media asked him. Well, what if, is Jim Harbaugh the right man if the, the talent level is the same? And he basically said... He is the right man for Michigan to be the coach because here's the quote: because we improved on how, because we improved. He cares for his players on and off the field, and it's what people don't see. They only see the games we probably lost. They say he's the wrong coach, but there's more to it. The things he cares for his players on and off the off the field. Coach Harbaugh, man, he's a great coach. And then he, a couple more things ends it with: he's a great coach for Michigan, and he always will be. I mean, he's an okay coach, right? Uh, you could have called him great his first two seasons. You could call him pretty dang good his first three or four seasons. But last two seasons, he's been kind of an embarrassment. Um, you absolutely got destroyed in with a senior quarterback and an unbelievably talented offense at Wisconsin at home against Ohio State in 2019. You lost to Penn State when you were down by, what, 20 points in the first half in 2019. You lost the bowl game to Alabama. So I don't think Jim Harbaugh has been a great coach here at all at Michigan. And so if it's not talent, if it's not coaching, then what is it? I don't really know, but... Nico Collins, maybe he believes these things, maybe he does it. I'm not too sure. But the Wolverines will resume spring practice, practice 9 through 15 starting on Monday. There was some talk that they were coming back on Sunday but because the Michigan basketball team will play at 5 o'clock in the Sweet 16 against Florida State. No football practice that day. I'm sure they'll let the guys watch the game and be back on the field after two-week break of kind of taking in all the new coaching uh changes and playbooks and everything that need to do uh, to potentially have a better season than two and four. So keep out, keep an eye out for more Michigan football content here on YouTube on Monday and beyond and what we're hearing on spring practice and make sure to subscribe to the channel. It's youtube.com slash Michigan TV. The most subscribers of any Michigan football channel here on YouTube, most audience. So thank you so much to you, those of you that have subscribed and have been with us for a while. If you haven't yet, if it's your first time watching or you just never hit the subscribe button, click that button below the video, the follow button, and you will subscribe button, and you will be subscribed to get every video that we have. All right, now I'm going to talk about maybe the juicy part of the content. I'm just making you guys watch longer and just, just dragging it out to make sure that you will get my watch time up to get to this story because asked around after there was a lot of message board and Twitter rumors for a couple of days on Giles Jackson. And... I've got a, I would say it's as good of a uh, feel and multiple people telling me that he has been not putting in the best effort, not performing as up to expectations and doesn't really have the, uh, the advocates for him on the coaching staff that maybe he had as a freshman when those guys recruited him in, given that the coaching staff turnover is, you know, 80% since he started in his two seasons, now coming into his third year at Michigan. There is some real talk that Giles Jackson's been passed on the depth chart that he will be transferring out of Michigan after this semester, um, four, three, four weeks from now, and will no longer be a part of the Wolverine program. And that's a bummer because after his freshman year, especially what he did on special teams, I was very, very hyped up about Giles Jackson's future. And I certainly wish him the best, but sounds like he won't be with the program. We're going to talk about this and more in a second, but want to make sure you guys get going with our sportsbook partner, BetUS, before Michigan versus Florida State on Sunday. Chatsports.com slash GoBlue drops you onto the BetUS sign-up page. Get there, sign up, and deposit. Use that promo code GoBlue. We're going to hit you up with the Michigan football jersey, the Jordan brand jersey. If you get going, new user, sign up and deposit. 
make a bet on a March Madness game, and then email us, goblue at chatsports.com to redeem the jersey. We're sending you the jersey, so don't be calling BetUS, asking your jersey. Email us, goblue at chatsports.com to redeem the jersey. So again, it is chatsports.com slash goblue. Use that promo code GOBLUE when you sign up and make your first deposit. You get a 125% deposit bonus. And if you email us, GOBLUE at chatsports.com, we will send you a Michigan football Jordan brand jersey once you make a bet on a March Madness game. All right. Keep it rolling here in the Giles Jackson transfer rumors. I have heard, I'm not as confident about this one, that Cal, Arizona, Arizona State, potentially Oregon, are in the running to get his services if they'll have him, right? You never know. Um, with eligibility rules where guys get an extra year, depending on whether it you know, doesn't matter if they played or not in 2020, didn't count against eligibility, there was a real scholarship crunch. You see all the players from Michigan that have transferred in the past year or so, only a few of them have landed anywhere. Wake Forest has got a couple guys and, and a few others have landed, but there's still a half dozen or so Michigan players that have not found a new home, including Joe Milton. So, We'll see what happens. If those programs have room for him, maybe he'll end up in the Pac-12 starting next season. And with potentially with NCAA rules changing, he could have instant eligibility. I don't know if he'd qualify for any exception to be instantly eligible, but we've seen lately that nearly everybody does get uh, uh, instant eligibility if they petition the NCAA for it. So Giles Jackson potentially uh, will be announced soon officially. I'm not sure that he is transferring from Michigan and we're pretty confident that that will happen here in the next three or four weeks once the Michigan spring semester is over. You would have known about this yesterday if you follow me on Twitter, at James Yoder. So make sure you do. Make sure you send me a tweet that says you're an MFer, and I will retweet you and follow you back uh, through the month of March. So go ahead and do that now. Giles Jackson, is it a real loss? I mean, I was super pumped up about him last year. I thought him and, jo him and uh, um, Joe Milton could be something special. We all bought into the hype, drank the Kool-Aid. Um, I thought he could be like a Tyree Kill style, given how uh, he did as a true freshman on special teams, catching a few balls, having a few reverses and sweeps and things like that. But the results just were never there for him, right? Two seasons at Michigan, 24 catches and 309 yards, right? Nine catches in 2019, only five during the regular season, four against Alabama in the bowl game. And then last year, in six games, 15 catches, right? Right? I mean, that's that's nothing too special. It's, frankly, rather pedestrian. Um, his long was 50 yards, but his high yards last year, 50. let's go through them. 50 yards, 36 yards, 6 yards, 58 yards, 17 yards. I'm not sure how much you're losing you know, at this point. He was a starting wide receiver last year, and he put up uh, 167 yards on 15 catches in six games. That's not starting wide receiver numbers. And so I think there's something that could be said that, Wish him the best, but he wasn't the right guy for what Michigan wants to do if those are the kind of numbers that he's putting up from wide receiver's perspective. Special team's perspective, one of the better kick returners that Michigan's had over the last decade, but maybe he'll take those talents to another school, and that will be that. But I expect Giles Jackson to no longer be with the Michigan football program, uh, and I expect it to be announced, if ever officially, probably sometime in the next three weeks. I'm guessing he will con he will still participate in some way in spring practice, uh, but I could be wrong on that. We'll see how it plays out. One more time, though, subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. It's the Michigan Football Report by Chet Sports. Make sure you subscribe, and we'll be back with another video probably at least after Sunday's Michigan versus Florida State basketball game. Until then, go blue.